So let's get started. Talk about concrete mixture design submittals. So the so I've actually written a book called Concrete Reports and Submittals, which goes over all the different paperwork that's behind, uh, that's in and around concrete. And it's, um, I felt like it was a book that needed to be written. It may not be, uh, uh, it's really important because you can't find a lot of that material just laying around in most books and people don't have a common knowledge of a lot of them, uh, a lot of them stuff. So it's a really cool book. Um, if you do a lot of submittals and read a lot of reports, um, you can really give you a lot of good insight, especially for the uh, engineering interns, uh, people that are just starting out, um, filled, you know, field, field quality control testing people. I mean, it really can help you out quite a bit. Uh, another thing that's a really good, if you're talking about mixture design submittals, Frank Kolinsky from Gallup, New Mexico. If you, if you know Frank, Frank's been around for ACI for years and years. He's a great guy. He actually uh, wrote an article to the AC, uh, Concrete International you see over there on the right. And he talked about concrete mixture design submittals. Did a, did a real good job putting it all together. Um, and, but what, so I highly recommend going and reading that. But what this mixture design submittal process is, it's really a way to make sure for, um, you know, the engineer of record on a project, to make sure the contractor, the producer, you know, everybody's not only, um, they're, they're communicating and making sure they have the right concrete. And so a lot of times, you know, there's so many specifications on a project that you can't just say, well, this is my 3000 PSI concrete mix. Does it have air in it? Yep. It has air in it. You know, well, how much, you know, and well, well how close, you know, how, how good are your breaks? I mean, how close are they? We're getting paid off of, you know, percent within limit specs. So, you know, we need to make sure our standard deviation is not too crazy. Oh, we don't have any test results. Oh, we don't, you know, we don't do this. We don't do that. Well, this is kind of the mixture design submittal process can kind of help see what the mix design that you are selling to the contractor or what that contractors, you know, that what the bid for that mix design, what it actually looks like. Um, so it's just, so it's really good, really helpful. Um, it contains the uh, testing data, the materials, and the mixture design proportions. So it can really help out the engineers, the contractors, everybody to, to really understand what the mix that that concrete producer is going to provide, what that's going to look like. Um, and it really does clear up a lot of confusion. So the basic process of a submittal is if you're a concrete producer, especially, to start that submittal process is you're going to um, review the specifications and compile all the paperwork necessary. Sometimes I've had submittals that were 50, 60, 70, 80 pages. I've heard some people where they have, you know, quite a few different mixture designs and they've had over 120 pages, which to me, I thought 60 pages was a lot. and Apparently, you know, it, I mean, you can have quite a few different pages in there. So there's a lot of paperwork that's involved. You need to make sure that you have, you know, all the requested samples and data and everything um, put together. And then you're going to provide that, um, you know, to the engineer of record. And that engineer of record, that person that's that's really in charge of the project, that's you know, approving or, or going to accept or reject your mixture design, your submittal. Um, and so it's kind of interesting. There's a lot of conversations that can occur through this process to kind of clarify, you know, why this mix won't work or what are you actually looking for? What is this, what is this standard really all about? Um, so it can really help you out should also state that this whole process occurs before the pouring of the concrete. So you can't, uh, you know, submit your mixture design after you pour the concrete. That's not 
how it works. So you need to make sure you have all your, how you know the this is, so this process takes time. You make sure you have all your data, all the paperwork, everything you know starts putting together. So a lot of times you know a project may be six months before it starts, and they're looking at bids or you know a year out or something. They're looking at bids or looking at submittal. Um, just trying to make sure they're trying to figure out what all, um, you know, they're doing it. They can't just, you know, turn over backwards to do a submittal. Um, it sometimes be hard for certain people. So, you know, I've seen some where you were, you know, I've helped with submittals and it only took, you know, a few hours to do, but you know, as your projects get bigger and there's more specifications, the harder it is for it to, uh, to be just you know a day or you know a few hours, so kind of be aware of that. It, it's 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 a process. The submittal mixture design submittal is really a process. You're going to write a cover letter that kind of summarizes what your mixture design is, highlights key points. Then you go out and you talk about your mixture design proportions. So how much rock, how much sand, how much cement, water. What is you know. Um, the replacement of maybe fly ash, how much water reducer you're adding, um, where's, you know, the, the target uh, air content, can target uh, slump, what workability are you looking for, what's your total, total cementitious material type, stuff like that. Then you go into the historical testing results where, you know, you look at the actual concrete testing data. Then after, and after that, You'll go into the material specifications a lot of times. Um, it's important. Sometimes they'll be with the mixture proportions. So you may say this is an ASTM C33 fine aggregate. Um, this, you know, this chemical admixture meets a type A, you know, and an, a type A or a type D or type, you know, a chemical admixture. Um, you know, this is a class C fly ash, this is a class F fly ash, stuff like that. And then right after that, you'll have your material reports. And so um, the material reports will kind of provide more information about each of those materials other than, you know, it meets ASTM, blah, blah, blah. This will actually have a lot more details about, um, you know, this is the cement mill cert, this is your fly ash report, um, stuff like that. It, it'll all kind of be in there. So cover letter, again, this is a formal letter of introduction. A lot of times you have maybe talked on the phone, you haven't really met, um, you know, before, whether it's you're the contractor or the producer or the engineer of record, you haven't really met um, yet. You haven't really talked a lot. So this is kind of an introductory to, hey, this is the mixed design. This is kind of the summary of of what it, you know, the criteria that it meets. There's very little numbers, very little data that's in it. You may throw in a compressor strength number or, or something that that's that that is a focal point for the project, but a lot of times you just try to leave that alone. Um, this also communicates the scope of work. So it says, hey, you know, it may be something like as basic as you know, here is a mix design for a footing application and a floor application. And then the contractor goes, oh, you forgot the one, the wall that we need. You forgot the column that we need. You forgot this. So they can kind of go back and, you know, realize, oh, the scope of work's not, not where, you know, you forgot this part of it. It also highlights the key elements. So things like um, you know, not only the mixture design specifications, maybe if, you know, for the state or, or ASTM or whatever, but it also talks about like, maybe you have adjustments, maybe it's hot or cold weather concrete, um, what adjustments they have, they may not have chilled water, um, they may not, you know, or they may prefer chilled water, but they don't prefer ice. Um, so, you know, there's different options that they may have. That you're not aware of and they kind of communicate some of that in there for you. Um, if there's unique parameters of the mix design, so if there's new, new, uh, new unique, uh, maybe uh, uh, whether it's performance or something that's kind of a little special with 
with how things were done and it might be a little oddball thing. You really need to put that in there too to kind of explain why that is. So next year design proportion. So this shows the detail. So this shows your, usually it does your volumes um, of, of the concrete or it may only just do the weight. So it may just be the amount of, you know, material that you're going to batch. But if you have specific gravities, you can figure out the volumes too. So a lot of times they'll provide the specific gravities um, of those materials. Um, they'll usually show where that source of that material is coming from. They will state the water cement ratio, the fly ash replacement values, the air content that it's designed at. Um, usually they'll talk about basic, you know, this is 4,000 PSI mix and, you know, there's um, 400 or 564 pounds of cement and it has a max water cement ratio of 0 0.50 and it has a slump limit of five inches plus or minus one inch. And, you know, I mean, you can kind of go from there. I'm talking about the workability um, type. So, I mean, there's a lot that, that's going on there. Then you also have things like the specifications of that material. So this shows usually the quality of the material. So what standard um, this material meets. So it, um, where the source is coming from, things like specific gravity, where it's a ratio between the density of, of water to uh, a material. Um, with the same, you know, some same known volumes, but different weights. And so you're trying to, you know, you try to have those there so that they can kind of go back and forth and do some of their basic math. Um, but this page is, you know, sometimes combined with your mixture proportions page. I like to put it in there as its own separate, just so that people don't get confused because there's a lot that's going on if you just add it all to the table. Um, make sure, you know, if you're going to put something like this in there that you have all the information, all the standards are actually correct. If, you know, people prefer ASHTO, then put ASHTO. If people prefer ASTM, put ASTM. You know, just recognize kind of what, what you're doing. And then, you know, usually after this, we talk about historical data. So, you know, I talked about a couple of lectures ago with trial batching well you know how historical data kind of comes about so you have at least 30 results that you're supposed to have for a mixture ACI 301 does allow for less than 30 results but your mixture design sometimes may not actually meet that because you're trying to optimize it um, you know may be just fine you don't have you know have very few little breaks over time but um, ACI 301 actually requires um, different and I should state that one result is a mixture that is batched and tested one time so you have to ha do that 30 times for you to get 30 results so like I said, it's a little difficult, especially with new mixes, to go out there and do that. And there is some questions um, on how you can collect your data, whether you, you go out to, you know, does it have to be your data that you're testing or can it be a third party's data? Um, there's a lot of different questions out there and there is quite a bit of wiggle room um, with what the standard says. So just kind of, you know, be aware of that. So let's talk about these different reports now um, and kind of what they're about. So the aggregate report provides test results, provides, uh, provides information about gradation, specific gravity, absorption, unit weight, um, so usually you may even have the gradations graphed. So this is just an example, kind of what it looks like. So, um, you know, once you get an aggregate report, a lot of times 
they may only have the gradations on there even. So, um, you know, so people do, people kind of report these things a little differently. Um, if you ask for something, you know, they're, they're going to, they're usually going to give it to you. Um, but they may not run the test every day. So you're going to have to bear with them. Um, a cement mill cert, these come in, you know, if you buy cement, you usually get them every, every production run every, uh, it may be every month. Depends on um, how frequent they're making cement um, at the plant with the product that they're, that they're making. So like a type one or type one, two cement, it's very common for, for you to get just a mill cert every month. Um, if a plant, that's all they make is type one, two cement. If, you know, if they, if they kind of do a big run of type one, two cement, and then they stop for three or four months, um, then you may be submitting the same mill cert for, uh, you know, for four or five months, the very last one that you had. And then that's because that's the representative of that cement still. But whenever you're looking at uh, a cement mill cert, there's a lot of information on there. There's chemical data and physical data on that. Um, so just kind of be aware, you know, what, what you're looking at. Most people are going to focus on, you know, they want to know what type of cement it is. So type one, two, and five. Um, focus on the C3A content. So if it's above 8%, it's a type one. If it's a, between five or if it's above five to 8%, it's a type two. And if it's 5% or below, it, it probably will be a type, type, type five. So be aware that there are a lot of other requirements, but this is the you know, number one um, difference between, uh, between those three different types of cement is the, um, you know, is the sulfates attack, which is the C3A. So um, we also focus on a lot of times on your strengths. So people will report the strengths a little differently. Some will, some will want to report the cube strengths. So not the uh, compressor, not the cylinders, the four by eight cylinders, but a little two by two by two cube. They'll report that, at, you know, one, three, seven, 28 is real common they don't always necessarily have to report the 28s. Um, it's not part of the actual uh, requirements of ASTMC uh, 150. And also a lot of times like you see here on this mill cert, um, the 28 days is actually from the previous month. Um, the physical data with this mill cert um, uh, you know, the, we already talked about strength, but the initial setting time, so the bycat, um, people will kind of look at, see how well it'll set up to. So there are different, um, you know, there's a lot of stuff to look at with your reports. So if you have questions, you can always go and talk to your technical service engineer, um, in your area about your cement, uh, cement, uh, mill cert. I'd be glad to talk to you, probably, probably. Can't speak for every cement, every cement company in the industry, but most of them, most of the ones I run into are really good people. So um, the fly ash report. So this is, you know, fly ash isn't tested all the time. Um, normally, you know, you can request one and they'll, they'll usually provide you with one. Um, so Things like, you know, is it a class C or class F fly ash that people focus on what the calcium content is, where the LOI, you know, the blaine, so blaine, so how fine those uh, fly ash particles are. They may even look at the 28 day strength activity index, meaning you make a mix without any, with 100% Portland cement, no fly ash. You make, make a, a 28 day breaks for compressive strength. And then you make another concrete mix that has um, fly ash in it. And uh, the, you know, and then you make, you break your compressive strengths at, you know, if it's 28 days, you break them then. If it's at seven, then you, you know, break them then. 
and you look at the difference. So there's a percent difference. So they go up or they go down. And then from that, you can go through and actually, um, you know, that percentage of the act is that called the activity index. So there's supposed to be a minimum amount for uh, ASTMC 618 that you're supposed to have. So let's talk about fly ash. So the different grades of fly ash um, are, are kind of important too. So the grades are based on the activity index. So if it's a 100 grade slag, that means a, the index is right there at 100%. Just like we talked about fly ash, where they'll make a, a mix of 100% Portland cement. They'll make a mix um, with a certain amount of slag in there. And then they will test to see how where the activity indexes. They'll compare both the compressor strengths at 28 days of concrete with 100% with Portland cement and then a certain amount of slag. They'll compare them and that difference, um, you know, whether it's a 100% a, a or 90% or whatever, um, they'll have an activity index value at 28 days and at seven. And so um, you can go through and 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 and, and that's how they kind of base their grit, their their grade of slag. The blend fineness is um, how much they pretty much had to grind that slag to get to the um, grade of slag that they wanted. So how how fine did they need to, to have those slag particles when they were in the uh, grinding mill to get to the twenty eight day um, strength activity index. Then they also have specific gravity. So they'll, the specific gravity is going to change um, with your slag sum. Um, every source has a little bit different one. So just kind of be aware of that. You also have admixture companies. They have kind of have to be careful with exactly what you're with um with some of these uh some of them are more like brochures where they're marketing their admixture products um some are some are a little bit more of like an actual chemical admixture report you can actually go and request both a lot of times they have um these sheets where they talk about everything you ever want to know about the chemical admixture for the most part other than usually the um, chemical chemical um, composition of it. And even then you may just hear a, um, you know, a, a chemical compound or, or two. They're the big ones to help people understand what this, um, how this chemical admixture works. So usually what you're gonna do is for an admixture product um, sheet, you're gonna have the dosage rate, um, you know, the, the actual range of dosages. And then it's going to talk about what that chemical makeup is in some ways. Um, you're going to focus on, you know, the performance requirements. So what does that admixture actually do? Um, what, what applications the admixture is used for? And, you know, some basic things maybe about the mix. So you can see over there on the example of that sheet, it talks about the material standards the performance description, the benefits of using it, the applications that you can use it for, the guidelines for, for usage and dosage and stuff. And then you have product notes, talks about dispensing and mixing. So like the batching process and how long you need to mix it for, um, where within the sequence do you need, or is it recommended? And then there's things like precautions, where do you need to, how do you need to store it and how do you need it to be packaged? So there's a lot of really good information um, in an admixture um, report. So let's kind of get to some questions now. So I talked about all the different components. We talked about cover letter, concrete mixture proportions, uh, the material standards. We went through uh, different uh, the historical data. We talked about um, we talked about the uh, different reports that all go in the behind all of that. But at the end of the day, sometimes we have some questions about the mixture design submittal process. So does, you know, does blank require a mixture design submittal? I hear that a lot. And so, so let's talk about some of the real basic stuff that, 
you know, that, that don't require a mixture design submittal and some things that do. So this is a scenario where you have ice that is needed to be added to the concrete mix due to the field conditions right after, because right now it's hot weather concrete. So you need to add some ice. So we're gonna replace some of the water. We're gonna take out some of the batch water and we're gonna put in some of the, some of the ice to it. Um, so you come out with the same water cement ratio. It's just, you know, it's the state of the, of, of the water. You know, you have some that's liquid form, you have some that's ice form. So um, that's kind of how that works. So ACI 318-14 subsection R 26.4.3.1D, it actually does state that a minor change in a mixture proportions made in response to fill conditions is not considered a new mix. So minor changes. What are minor changes? Well, uh, those are things that are, you know, very small changes in the mix that I can occur on a daily basis. So you can think of things as like water reducer dosage changes, add mixture, um, uh, air entrainment, maybe some of the water content, um, you know, aggregate moisture corrections that that's going to, you're going to have to adjust for that. Um, using ice and, and hot weather is one of them. Um, you know, using hot, 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 uh, um, you know, hot water in cold weather, adding an accelerator, um, slight adjustments to the, you know, aggregate proportions to kind of, kind of do some of these adjustments. You know, maybe your gradation slightly changes a little bit. You need to change, you know, change, change up your portion slightly. I mean, some of those things are, are, are fine to do. Those, you know, it's not like we're changing our water cement ratio. Um, we're not, you know, we're not changing out sources stuff, you know, some of the big items that we'll talk about here in a minute. So changes should have minimal impact on performance. Things like strength and durability should have minimum impact on it. So a lot of these, it may actually improve the strength or the, or the durability or it may have no effect on it. And that's kind of um, really where you think of as minor changes. It just it has very little impact. Um, and it's really not you know, practical because every day you have moisture corrections for your aggregate. So it's really not practical to continuously resubmit um, uh, you know, a, a submittal for approval to get your aggregates, um, you know, the aggregate correction done. It just doesn't make sense doesn't make sense because your air dosage might change a little bit um, every day and so it doesn't make sense to go out and get a new submittal process approved because it may take you a day just to get that submittal process approved depending on what's going on so you know your moistures are going to be different um, you know to and a, a day later so then you have to submit another submittal process and this you know it's just a whole process where you're never going to get your mixture design approved in time to actually pour the concrete. So kind of be aware, like, you know, small changes, you really don't need to worry about a resubmittal. Um, so how, you know, does this require a resubmittal? If you have a type one cement for this mix and you want to replace it with a type three for high early strengths, that obviously is a, um, is a yes. You need to, Go through that process. Another example is the fly ash source is having a shortage, and so now we need to switch to 100% Portland. Well, both of these are major changes. So changes of materials, if changes to the brand, the type, the size, meaning big portions, the volumes, um, the source of the cementitious material, or the aggregate, or the water, or the ice, or the admixtures are proposed. Submit new fill data, um, you know, data from new trial batches or other evidence um, that the change will not adversely affect the relative proportions of the concrete. Submit the data before changes are made. So sometimes you can even, um, so it's things like changing, you know, admixtures, suppliers, changing cement um, suppliers or, or sources of cement, that's a big deal. Changing how much fly ash you're going to use in the mix is a big deal. And then 
Um, so you may have to go through the, the submittal process again, especially with like fly ash, you, you may have it in the, in the mix for durability reasons. So now your dur durability purposes um, will go down quite a bit. So you really need to be careful. So when we talk about major changes, um, that's gonna require a mixture design, a new mixture design submittal. Um, and again, it's things that are gonna have um, a significant impact to strength and durability. So some of these mixture adjustments involve things like the material source change, um, the cement, the SCM or admixture type change. Um, you know, um, if you go from a class C flash to a class F fly ash, that's a big deal. Adding fibers to your mix, uh, I would consider that a major change. And then things like different aggregate radiation. So maybe if you go from a 67 stone or if you go from a 57 stone to a 67 stone, both of those are completely different gradations. And so you may have some, um, some proportions that you kind of need to look at and change. So if you are a viewer, what should you be looking at whenever you go through these mixture design um, submittals? Well, you need to make sure that the design is actually going to meet the specifications. You make sure that, you know, the mixture proportions, there's nothing weird, you know, everything kind of looks like it's going to meet the specifications. The the materials that are that are being put into the concrete are good quality sufficient materials based on the STMs or ASHTOs standards. And then, you know, you want to make sure when you look at the test results, you want to make sure not only is it recent, but are they actually prefer performing at the level that you really need? You don't have to get too high of a level of performance, but you need to make sure it's not too variable and it's not, there's not, you know, way below the minimum threshold that you need. So with that, that's kind of basics of mixture design submittals.